Hello family, I just wanted to come on really quick and share with you a vision that the Lord showed me this morning during prayer about the four angels and the river Euphrates and the coming destruction uh, that's soon to come upon the earth. Uh, I'm not going to speculate what he showed me, I'm just going to show you as best I can and leave it at that because when we start to speculate that's when we move out of the will of God so I'm just going to share because I feel like it's important enough to do so so let's get into it so as I said I was um, walking the floor and I was praying this morning and as I was praying I began to hear these words weeping sorrow angels river Euphrates it was choppy like that. The words was like they was coming in like, you know how you receive a, a, a choppy message and it's like a little bit given to you out of pieces in time. That's how it was coming to me. But I continued to pray. I just kept going like I didn't hear anything. And then I heard it for the second time. Weeping, sorrow, angels, Euphrates. That's when I stopped dead in my tracks and I asked the Lord, God, why am I hearing this? Why am I hearing this? And as soon as I asked the Lord, why am I hearing this? I saw a vision and I've tried to draw it here, but I'm not the best artist. But I'm going to explain to you exactly what I saw. I saw in the sky there was this black, this black stuff. That's the best I can explain. It looked like the color of oil. It was pitch black and it was uh, spread out in the sky like a, like it was um, it was really thick and it was really heavy in this one local area. And it had rays and uh, arms coming out of it like sun rays. I tried my best to draw it. And but right beneath that is the land. You can see people walking around the tree house, the road and stuff like that. The ain't the Lord was showing me that this 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 darkness, this this whatever is coming, is concerning these four angels from the river Euphrates, and the area where these things is going to be released, the the thickness, the uh, the black where you see it the most blackest, that's where it's going to be concentrated, dead pandemonium that area is going to be wiped that's what god was making me feel in my spirit that area is going to be uh just completely wiped but then you see those arms that are branching out that looks like rays of sun where those arms that whatever that destruction is is going to branch out on those rays of look like sun, but it's not sun. Those arms are going to reach out in other places and begin to decimate and utterly de destroy uh, people. And the Lord was saying it's going to be weeping and sorrow from this destruction, this, this massive destruction. Right? As I'm watching this vision take place and I'm hearing in my spirit utter uh, annihilation, the Lord was making it clear to me that he was going to protect me from whatever this is that is coming. And I wish so badly that I can remember that prophecy that God spoke to me since it was just this morning. But for the life of me, I cannot remember everything that God said to me concerning this. I remember some words like darkness. Like it's going to be darkness and, and that the Lord was saying that he's going to protect me with the light. Like the Lord was going to put like his light around me to protect me from this darkness uh, and, uh, uh, of these things of whatever this is concerning these angels. I just know it's going to be something about some darkness. I know it's going to be that the Lord is going to protect me with a light. And I know that it's going to be people dying in it and people weeping just like in the Bible, um, the angel of death. That's what I got uh, in my spirit, how the angel of death went out through the land in the, in the night and was killing them. And the Lord was just telling me that he's going to protect me from this, from this. And that's all that I can remember. And I'm so sorry. It was a lengthy conversation. The Lord talked and talked, but I can't remember any of it. It just that little bit of it that he's going to protect me is some darkness and it's going to be some deaths and it's concerning the angels from the four rivers lots of weeping and lots of sorrow 
Now, I'm going to treat this topic as if somebody is just coming across this information for the first time and you don't know anything about the angels bound in the four rivers of Euphrates. I've done a little bit of research for you. Uh, let's, let's get into it. First thing I found you online with this snippet and it says the voice tells the angels with the trumpet to release the four angels who have been bound in the river Euphrates. In the miniature, these four avenging angels rise from the river with their weapons ready to fulfill their mission of killing a third of the people on the earth. Now, that's what I found online, but of course, we got to go to the word of God, and I'm going to take you to Revelations and show you exactly what the word of God is saying about this. And we're going to start in Revelations chapter 9. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of man. So as you can see, it was appointed to them at an exact hour and an exact day. And an exact month, in an exact year, this is what God calls the appointed time for these angels to be released. They had an appointed set time to be released to destroy man. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. So the Bible is saying it's going to be a massive amount of demons, an army um, that's going to be released with the sixth trumpet to slay one third of men uh, on the earth. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of janset and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths, or which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. God is talking about handmade idols, which he told us one of the Ten Commandments, don't make unto yourself any graven images. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So that's the word that I uh, found for you uh, concerning this. I pray that you take everything that you hear me say, as I've said before, take it to God. Now, these are some of the pictures of the Euph river Euphrates that we have all been seeing circulating over the Internet. We know that the Euphrates is practically dried up. Um, I believe it's some water still in it, but we know for the most part, a large part of it is, is completely dried up. One of the things that God revealed to us, in fact, uh, on this channel was that all of the the significant uh, land, water in the Holy Land is drying up. Like all of the four rivers that came from the that 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 house that that watered the Garden of Eden drying up and all of the, the, the Jordan, everything completely drying up over the, the Dead Sea. Uh, you can scroll through my playlist and go back and find that video down below. Now, I thought it was funny here that uh, the talking heads want us to believe that this water, the river is, Euphrates, is drying up because of climate change. When the Bible clearly says that the angel poured out his veil upon this river and dried it up so that it can make way for the kings of the east, you know, and that the angel dried up this river. Now, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9 that there is no new thing under the sun. So, 
let me read it to you first. It says, the thing that hath been, or the thing that which was in the past, that is that which will be, will also come back again. It says, and that which is done is that which shall be done. So that what was done in the past is going to be done again. And there is no new thing under the sun. So with that being said, I went back to the Bible and found two occasions where the Lord did send out the angel of death and it did kill a lot of people. So uh, let me show it to you. Um, the first one is Second Kings chapter 19, verse 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand. And when they arose or when they woke up early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Again, we have in Exodus chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out, hence altogether. Now, this particular one I wanted to take a little bit of time and focus on because it directly reminded me so much of my vision. Uh, because what the Holy Spirit was saying to me, weeping, sorrow, the angels in the river Euphrates, and it reminded me that... Uh, this happened in the Bible uh, when the angel of death came in the middle of the night. So I just wanted to pull this passage because it sounded a lot of similarities uh, uh, to me. And Moses said, thus said the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt will die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of the beasts, even the animals. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that you may know how that the Lord do it put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And that reminded me of how the Lord was saying, he's going to protect me from this, whatever this is that's coming, this darkness and these angels and, and this, 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 this annihilation that's coming. He's going to protect me. And how he was saying it was weeping and sorrow and how in this scripture, it was saying how they was, it, they're going to be crying because all of the death that's going to be taking place. So that's why I wanted to pull this because it sounded so, so similar. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt. God said, I'm killing the gods too. All these, these, these idols y'all have. And against the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Here God tells them how to protect themselves from the angel of destruction. He said, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, it sounded like the three days of darkness. I know I didn't think that at first when the Lord was telling that to me, but as I was reading it and telling it to you guys just now, that was the first thing that came to me. It sounds like the three days of darkness. I've heard a lot that it's going to be demons in that thing in the dark and we can't not go out or look out of our windows or nothing like that. So that's why I really wanted to pull these scriptures because it just sounded so similar. But let's keep reading. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean you by this service? Or why are we doing this? Why are we keeping this tradition? Or why are we uh, observing this? Why are we celebrating this? It says that you shall say it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the heads. And so remember, if you go through my playlist, you'll see why do we keep Passover video. And remember, I was saying your little ones may ask you, Nana, why are we keeping the Passover? Is this just a Jewish thing? You just tell them, no, this is the time that God passed over. If you scroll through my playlist, you're going to find that video as well. Let's keep going. 
And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Do you hear what I'm saying? Why that reminded me so much of that vision? Because what God was showing me in that vision where it's so concentrated, it's going to be utterly annihilated. But those arms are going to branch out and get even the other places that are far out. It's going to be so much death. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys. I pray that this bless you. Like I said, I don't want to speculate. I'm not saying this the three days of darkness. I'm just saying it was a lot of similarity to uh, what I have been hearing about the three days of darkness. But I definitely just wanted to share this vision with y'all. Please be in prayer for me. I'll be in prayer for you guys. And we just wait and know that God is faithful and he is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. I just pray for all of you. And I love you, and God loves you, and Jesus is coming soon. Amen.